you know, was from Harlem. And when I seen Mace run, driving around to California with Stevie J and his other guy in a drop top white Benz, you know, I flipped on him. I was like, yo, my man, you from Harlem. Don't you know these cats out here will tear your head down to the white meat? What's wrong with you? It's not sweet out here, bro. Then Mace said, yeah, I know. And they, how they was telling him that they wanted big and puff, and he was all right, he was good. Mace did not show up to the party the night Big got murdered. He said he was in the room with Brandy. Recording out. No, I was recording only you. I was recording only you. And once that record came out, it was probably like a week or two later, and then I was showing up at a video to do only you. So it was that fast. Then the locks got, the locks was already signed, and then I think like that next week, once the record started going crazy, it was like, yo, we got to sign. We got to sign. All right, so we gonna get to it. What did Puff do to piss you the fuck off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker puts you on? Mm. That's really good. Let me take my shit off. Let me break it down for you, Gene. Deal spilled some serious tea on how Mace managed to dodge Diddy's control. So Mace was stuck under Diddy's thumb at Bad Boy Records, is dealing with all kinds of shady business moves. Diddy was playing puppet master, trying to keep Maisie as in check with tight contracts and bogus deals. This nigga told me he want receipts. Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. You're not signing, nigga. Because I ain't need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, nigga. You know who to play with, nigga. Let's hear what John Deal had to say. A few weeks ago, Mace, he went viral over some comments he made about the night that Biggie got killed. He said that after Biggie got killed, over 70 bloods went to his hotel room looking for him to try to kill him. And he said that she was the only one that came to his hotel room to get him. Well, Mace, you know, was from Harlem. And when I seen Mace running, driving around to California with Stevie J and his other guy in a drop top white Benz. You know, I flipped on him. I was like, yo, my man, you from Harlem. Don't you know these cats out here will tear your head down to the white meat? What's wrong with you? It's not sweet out here, bro. Then Mace said, yeah, I know. And he told me about the basketball game or something that he went to and he, how they was telling him that they wanted big and puff, and he was all right, he was good. So Mace did not show up to the party the night Big got murdered. He said he was in the room with Brandy, right? I called Mace that morning, and uh, me and Mace spoke, and then he was telling me all them bloods and everything that was out there. So. I was with a couple of dudes that were from Black Hands, which is a part of the Black Gorilla Mafia. You know what I mean? And we just went to the end of his hallway. He said it was a lot of bloods out there. There's some, there's some dudes out there I wasn't recognizing. You, you know, I recognized, but I don't think it was, you know, he said it was like 70. When I got there, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't that many blue dudes out there like that. But he could have seen 70, 17, 20, 30. When when you think somebody trying to get you, you and niggas is running the hallways because they know bad boy was staying there. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of dudes. So when I got there with my team and everything, dudes who was came to the hospital with us, we was good. So all we had to do was put them in a the cab. Or, or, or car service so he can go where he had to go. And that was it. It was To me, it wasn't nothing. You understand? But to somebody in fear of their life, I can understand where he coming from. You feel me? You know, I'm already, you know, we already lost big. We on high alert. 
You understand? And now I got some dudes with me that's about it, about it. That's what they do. You know, I was with Chaz Williams and a couple of his dudes from out there in Cali. You understand that belong to the Gorilla, uh, the, I think it's the Black Gorilla Mafia or family. And then I'm with Black Hands and Chaz had a couple of his dudes. So I'm good. So we just made sure Mace was good. Yeah, he said that she was the only one that came to get him. He said that, you know, everybody that he went to L.A. with, he ain't leave with, you know? He said that everybody else was looking out for themselves. Well, <laughs> Puff went to San Diego and they put him on a jet about two hours after Big died. You know what I mean? So, uh, Clarence Avant and, um, what's his name? Clarence Avant and... Andre Harrell made sure we did that. I was supposed to go on the plane with him, but I was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't effing with you, boy. I'm out of here. So I went with the thing because we was gonna follow him that whole 120 miles. And um, he said, no, nah, we ain't need all that. So I didn't understand that. So I just jumped in the car with Chaz and the other teams and we went back to the hotel and then got that call from Mace early and I called them and they came back over with me and we went on and did what we had to do. But one thing that did caught my attention, cause this story went viral, but I did notice a whole lot of big media outlets when they was reporting about this story, they all were saying that Mace was lying. Nah, he, Mace ain't, he, you know, they might, you gotta understand when you scared and you see, you know, a bunch of dudes, whether he said it was 70, 30, 20, 10, you, you in fear of your life. You understand? So when you in fear of your life and then everybody that you come with ain't that no more and ain't picking up their phone, you're gonna look, a, you, you know, you're gonna feel a certain way. I can understand where he coming from. Or I can say I feel where he coming from. But every time he called me, I picked up my phone. I'm gonna pick up my phone. Cause all of us should have been going back home. I gotta live with that. Ain't about to let Diddy slide whenever Diddy says two words about my my response with 15 interviews in the podcast, to be honest. Who a Tuesday, yeah. Friday you was recording y'all. No, I was recording only you. I was recording only you. And once that record came out, it was probably like a week or two later. And then, I was showing up at a video to do only you. So it was that fast. Then the locks got, the locks was already signed. And then I think like that next week, once the record started going crazy, it was like, yo, we gotta sign him. We gotta sign him. All right, so we gonna get to it. What did Puff do to piss you the fuck off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker put you on? Hmm, that's really good. Let me take my shoes off. Um. Now, I can say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. Puff, how, how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like, I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Cause you said felt like okay, feeling. Okay, let's clear that up then. You say you feeling that. No, we gonna you... keep it with, I'm, cause I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth and I never got the respect I was worth. So that this thing that I got for Puff is more like, you trying to keep me here, nigga. I'm not here, all my peers is up here. All my peers are bosses. When it's time, just like, Somebody raise somebody up, you know they did work with you. They go from your little man to maybe a &R to something else. He just kept trying to keep me right here like, like he didn't want me to grow at anything. And and to anybody, is that gonna bother you? Yeah. Especially if I'm on. producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party and I would be in the studio writing the records and then I'd just come back and say, He'll say this is his part or that is his part, but I was the person there creating it all. Right. And then, I mean, from the lyrical standpoint. Yeah. 
yeah. where somebody did a beat, and even more money, more problems. I came up with that. I came up with the beat too. And I said, Stevie, we need to do this beat and do it like this. So just imagine all of these moments that are taken from you, the, the, the records, the beats, you ain't getting the money, you publishing. ain't getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. Okay. So that became really frustrating for me because I'm you said looking. You don't think you like that? What that mean? I don't think you would like that. Like if, if a motherfucker <laughs> did you like that? Yeah, what the like, story is you listening to? Man, I don't think you like that to be pulling what you pulling. Yeah, you, you from the ghetto? You like? I'm yeah, pulling. like you know what you know what would come with doing that, but everybody is letting you get away with it. Who's going to face Diddy? Let's say you are a rapper and you got receipts on Diddy. You say one word to or about Diddy, he'll make sure you never see the tip of a mic ever again. That's how Diddy he is. Everybody. So me quitting after one album, it didn't take long for me to figure it out. Like, I'm not going to be here with this. I don't care who's here because you're not paying me and you're not respecting me. And that's the real problem. Did you, did, 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 all right. And that's just, that's just, that's just the beginning. All right, then it's, then there's people that try to do bodily harm with me. They will be in the house with Puff. So I'm like, it's a funny game y'all playing behind the scenes. So when people see me, they just see me turned up. They just see me agitated. They just see me aggressive, but they don't know why. So if somebody, let's just say we run down on Gilly car. We, if we got guns or whatever, where we got them and we trap Gilly, and then the next week, you see Wallow with me at your house. How are you going to feel? Yeah, I'm snapping out. Tweaking, right? right? So now my head is bugging like what's really going on because every time something happened to me, it's somebody that's with him. But this is supposed to be the nigga I'm signed to. This is supposed to be who I'm getting money with. And I got to say this because when people see me irate and they see me aggressive, they want to, oh, what is Mace doing? Mace is bugging. No, it's a point you get to that you like, yo, I, I can't I can't let you play because you playing now dangerous games. So imagine somebody doing that and then they over there talking about brother love. Imagine how you feeling, bro. So it's like you holding a, you, 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 I, I can't blame Puff for this because I can't say he's doing it, but I can't say he's not. So if you look at the people who hate on me, right? They're from revolt shows. Who run revolt? Mm. The people that had the biggest problems with Mason, right? The craziest stuff about Mace come from revolt who run revolt. I'm still asking y'all because everything people keep doing, I'm like, why do they keep tripping on me? It's almost like they want me to be something that's going to be detrimental to them because it's not going to be detrimental to me. Damn. So answer that though, no, since we really no, talk. No, I'm from revolt. Did he run revolt? Did yeah, he run revolt. revolt. Right. So when I, when I hit him up and I say, yo, you got people every time they trying to discredit my name, you don't think that blocked me from other deals? You don't think that blocked me from other monies? You don't think that does something to my livelihood? Is you black ball right now? Mace is not the only one who's seen too much to be real. Gene has been speaking up for as long as I can, remember. Well, the way I feel, if I was Kim Porter's father and I seen that, I could only imagine what he may have thought his own daughter went through. Kim, has some things that happened to her over the years, broken nose, bruises, uh, ankle injuries. A lot of things happened to Kim that she never explained to her father. So to see that girl take that beating like that, her probably, father probably thought within himself that's some of the things that happened to my daughter. And it has to be sickening to him, knowing that his daughter 
probably went through the same sh that Cassie went through. Yeah, he made a comment saying that he was disgusted when he seen that video. He even said that he would even do a dog like that, the way Diddy did Cassie. Yeah. His heart... His heart would go out to Cassie because he's looking at the fact that his daughter's not here to... His daughter's not here to... To even raise her own damn kids, man. His daughter's not here in, in the seat, cause I got ki I got daughters myself, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I get my heart beat, both my arms. And just to imagine to think that somebody was doing that to your daughter, bro. I know Kim got tired. That's why she took that core screw and ripped his damn arm out. Try to rip his arm off for putting his hands on. I know she was tired. Them pillow fights and the, that, that smothering her with the pillows and all that, like he playing with her. I know she was tired. Yeah, he also told Rolling Stone that Diddy, he's a jealous person that don't know what love is. He knows that, bro. Kim couldn't have nobody, bro. Kim couldn't have nobody. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Diddy could do whatever. Puff could do whatever he wanted to do. Brother Love could do whoever he wanted to be. If Kim ever tried to get with somebody, Puff would interfere with them or with her trying to be with them. He wasn't letting that happen unless he was bringing them to the picture. That's what he used Kim for, bro. He wanted to make a deal with somebody. He'll get another girl and a guy who he's trying to make a deal with. And him and Kim, them, they all party together. Man, he used Kim for that shit, bro. Wow, so he used Kim for that? Yeah, bro. Yeah. You don't do that to somebody you're supposed to love, man. Do you remember any situation where he used her for that? I just I know a couple situations, but I know the people so well, man, and so good, and they some good people in Atlanta that had major groups that they party like that with them and their girls or the girls they brought into that, and I'm not gonna mention their name, man. But they know who I'm talking about. I got a lot of respect for dude, but I know of situations. I've seen situations like that in the Swiss hotel. So what is some of the situation? Don't name the people, but just what's the situation? When he used Kim, you know, to party with him and his, his girl and the other dude, and they they switch up, they do their thing, they do all, you know, they do that rock and roll lifestyle, bro. So he was using her for sexual activity, like orgies and, you know, threesomes and stuff like that. Yeah with other girls, other guys, yeah. Also, Kim Porter dad said that Kim loved Diddy, but they couldn't stay under the same roof together. Yeah, because it was only certain things that she was going to accept. And and like I said, they left, they lived that rock and roll lifestyle. If they're gonna do it together, they're gonna do it together. You're not gonna go out and sleep with Tom, Dick and Harry and Sally and Sue. And that's what he was doing. She accepted the fact if we partying like this together, it's okay. But for you to go out and do it yourself, nah, I'm not accepting that. But what he said about Biggie and Diddy is for real. He probably thought he made it once he was under Puff. Yeah, you called it, man. It ain't looking too good for Diddy, but I want to get into this Rolling Stone article, right? They did like a six month investigation on Diddy and they confirmed that Biggie, he was leaving bad boy. Didn't I say that? Didn't I tell everybody that Biggie was preparing to leave Bad Boy and everybody would have, was saying, how did I know? I told them I seen the contract. Me and Biggie had a, 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 a conversation the week before he died. I was in the Winnebago and Biggie was telling me his whole life story and I was telling everybody, I didn't know why this kid was telling me his life story. 
It's something that he had to feel. It's something that he had to know for him to sit there and tell me the stuff that he told me, bro. You understand? He wanted his marketing and his publishing back that he said that the management that he had under the, at the time, Mark Pitts and Wayne Barrows, who were puff friends, basically talked him into selling his publishing to Puff. You know what I'm saying? And when I spoke about it, people told me, well, how he know? I'm getting it from the horse's mouth. He's telling me the story. I already read all his contract when I was on a plane coming to California. I told y'all Puff gave me the briefcase. I said, I ain't got shit else to do. Click. And read the contract. And at the con at the end of the contract, it said, we will revisit your marketing and your publishing at a later date. Puff was gonna have him sign the contract for um I think it's Life After Death, the, the, the double CD, without giving his publishing and his uh marketing back. So now Big. He's about to go, I think it was Capital. He was signing a, a deal with Capital. You understand? With all those different groups. And Puff was not, you know, listen, Kirk Burrow said that Puff told him, man, you'll be dead before I give you all your publishing back. Wow. Never seen that one. I ain't hear about that. So you said two of your friends told Big E to giving him his publishing? Well, Mark, Mark Pitts and Wayne Barrows, they were doing the management. Those are Puff friends from college. Mark Pitts and Puff went to Howard. I think Mark, Mark, Mark probably graduated, I don't know. But he stayed at Howard, then he came to work for Puff. They were both, all of them was trained by Kirk Barrow. Now they all executives, either in a music business or Big's estate. So of course they're gonna be looking out for what's best for Diddy. Why do you think Bad Boy never got sued? Why do you think Miss Wallace never sued Bad Boy or Arista? Because the same dudes kept that lawsuit out of her mind. They did not have enough security or proper security for the notorious big in the height of the East Coast, West Coast war. What the media had already planned out to be, it was a war. Pocket died, there was gang violence on both sides. Why you think Ms. Wallace never sued Arista or Bad Boy? Because her management, Big's management, the people that took over their estate was all friends with Puck. And you feel like she should have sued them for bringing Biggie out to LA with a lack of security. Bro, I was a New York State parole officer and I also was an investigator. When I first got out there, I called Kirk Barrow. My man, we don't have enough security. There's not enough security here. I got Puff, Kenny got Puff, Paul got, Paul Offert has Big, and Kenny, I forgot Kenny uh, Baylock or something like that. Kenny, uh, not Kenny, Kenny Baylock has, um, I think this guy named Kenny Baylock. Paul Offer and some cop from uh, LA got big. Two people? Two people for Puff and two people for uh, Big. Now they got entourage. People were around us in the entourage. How do you look out for all those people? Arista did not provide proper security for Big. At the video shoot they did, cause they had these militionary men and they were on top of their game. And they only hired three of them. So Big had five people doing the video shoot. At the video, after the video shoot, he only had two. The whole time, he only had two. Come on, man. Get out of here. There was enough security. Arista should have been sued, and Bad Boy should have been sued. 
And speaking of that, Rolling Stone, they revealed that Diddy, he was fighting with, you know, Biggie attorneys before Biggie died over the publishing. Well, he didn't have to fight them. He owned them. Biggie, Biggie, which, Biggie mother was trying to get his publishing because she knew that's what her son wanted. Puck wasn't going to get that up. Hell no. Do you understand what... I think Big probably... Didn't he go diamond? Did that ever go diamond? He sold 10 million copies? You know what the publishing is on that? One point is worth, worth about a million dollars. One point on that album is worth the million dollars. So if he own all what he owns with Bad Boy, plus what he owns Bigs, Big 24%, Bad Boy automatically take 50%. If he got 75% of that, and 1% is worth the million dollars, that's 75 million he get off the rip. My numbers could be wrong, but damn. Swing. Remember the New York club shooting with J-Lo? Well, that's a whole other side of Diddy that we almost saw. Back then, he allegedly made her sneak in a G in her purse to pop another ninja in a club. He missed the shot and it all went to hell, but he walked out. And also in this article, a guy named Damien, he's a former intern at Bad Boy. He said that, you know, when Diddy and Jennifer Lopez broke up, Diddy, he had staffers kept outside, you know, MTV, TRL Studios with signs, try to win Jennifer Lopez back. You know anything about that? Every word. See, what happened was, <laughs> Jennifer had this personal assistant and I don't know what she owed Puff or what Puff did for her, but he was able to call her and find out everywhere Jennifer was at. You understand? One time she was somewhere, he sent a uh, hundred dozen roses and was trying to get Luther Vandross there to sing for her. So, I believe Damien, because I was there when he was making uh, deals with the personal assistants of Jennifer Lopez and finding out where Jennifer was going to be so he could send people over there. You understand? With gifts, roses, and all this other shit. Wow. So he was really trying to win her back then? Oh, no doubt. No doubt, bro. But she wasn't, she wasn't, she, she, they wasn't listening, you know what I'm saying? These guys is hard-headed, man. I used to tell people, yo, when he was dating Jennifer, I said, y'all know private eyes is following us, right? P.I.s is following us. And P.I.s would be following, following, following us. And I don't know if Jennifer had the P.I.s doing it. I don't know if Benny Medina, somebody who had some kind of relationship with Jennifer, I had private eyes following us to see what Puff was doing. Crazy, man. How you feel about Biggie's mom reaction to the video? Her saying that she wanted to slap Diddy. Well, I think she wanted to slap him way before she saw that video. Big Mother wanted to slap Puff way before that. Because if you ever see her in anything that they ever gave for Big and Puff was there, she was always distanced to him. Because she probably believed after having that conversation with me that Puff played some kind of part in her son dying, her son's death. Because why would he lie to Big's mom and say he didn't know me when all the investigators, the cops told her, have a conversation with Gene Deal. Gene Deal gave us the information on what happened, what transpired. Why would Diddy tell her that he didn't know me? So she would probably want to smack his face way before that. That just gave her more and more reasons when he seen what type of person he really was. Foxy was out there with Zip now. And the story that I heard was, is that when Keefe D them saw Tupac them. They told Zip them they was gonna go holler at 
those dudes. Zip them went one way and Keefe D them went the other way. The other way was to where Pockman was at. I heard that that night. I heard the full story when an individual who was out there with them came back to the block and told us. Now, Foxy has been through a lot of shit in this industry. A lot of things, brother. And if people think that Jag War Wright has been damaged in this industry, Foxy is a whole nother problem for them. It's going to be really interesting if she gets on a jury stand and remembers or either articulate anything that happened that night. And that's what I'm going to say about that. So for the people that don't know, right, what was Foxy Brown's connection to Keefe D and Zoo in that whole situation? Foxy Brown is maybe number one or number two the hottest female rapper at that time bar you know Lil Kim Foxy Brown Foxy got one of the hottest songs with Jay-Z Foxy own album did numbers Foxy is Brooklyn she's hanging with Zip Zip is Mike Tyson right hand man they like family you understand what I'm saying so she's out there partying with them she's hot She's fine, young girl in that whole nine yards. She's having fun with them. You know what I'm saying? You got Foxy Brown in your crew. You got other ladies and other people coming because they know she's a celebrity at this time. So she's hanging with them. She got passes to go, what, to the party? She got passes to go to the fight because she's with Zip them. You understand what I'm saying? So now, she's in the car with them so happy when they on their way to 626. That's when Keefe D them is in the other car. So Foxy car in the car was zipping them. She could testify that Keefe D was there. He went one way and we went the other way. Did he go see Park them? She can't testify to them because they wasn't there when it went down. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what they probably wanted to do. Zip ain't here. He probably wouldn't have testified in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? He wouldn't have testified in the first place, but Foxy is here and she was at the scene. Can she place Keefe D in the vicinity She probably could. But my thing is this, right? If she was out there with Zip, I always heard that she was dating, you know, corrupt at that time. So I'm a little confused. Like, how did that work? Bro, that don't mean she, uh, that don't mean she's sex and Zip and them. She out there, they, they homeboys. Zip from New York, she from New York. That's their protection. Zip got bodyguards and people with him. So that's because she's with corrupt. That don't make she's, out there doing nothing with them. She's a young lady, she's out there. She needs to feel safe, she needs to feel protected. And she's a superstar. She's a star. Foxy was still a star then, bro. In 96, Foxy was a star still. You think she gonna testify? She has to. If they subpoena her to testify, she either has use her Fifth Amendment right. Jay-Z is involved too. I didn't know they played like that they ruined her career so fast. One, uh, another thing that Shook said on his um, American Nightmare documentary was that when the shooting occurred with Tupac, that uh, he grabbed Tupac and pulled him down. And that's when he got hit in the head. But he said he looked at the car and he says it's a white Cadillac. He said, I looked at the, I looked in the car 
and I saw a guy with fear in his eyes because he thought he got himself a trophy. He didn't say KPD's name or Orlando's name or, or anybody's name, but he's basically saying that he had eye to eye contact with somebody in that Cadillac. And I remembered KPD always saying, you know, I thought Suge was gone. I, I, I saw him get hit in his head and he looked right at me. We locked eyes. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, cause I know you were around him. Did he, has he ever privately told you or have you ever privately heard him say it was Southside? We're getting right up to this point right here. At the last minute, one of the dudes in deal with rage, he took something that he know not to do. Pulls in, we stopped through the light. He cuts in front of us. As he cuts in front of us, we stop in here. My road dog pulls in this lane, telling me to get over. As I'm proceeding to get over, the other car comes right there, this is a Cadillac. When the Cadillac starts to shoot, I get hit, I push it down, I get hit, bam. When I put it down, bam, I get hit in the head. When I get hit in the head, I immediately left out. I left out. I seen him, you know, motherfucker with fear in the bitch ass eyes. Like shit, like he felt like shit. He ain't got him control. Southside, yeah, shit, hell yeah. Southside, not, I can't honestly say uh, KPD and Orlando, but Southside, yeah, man, it's sort of a fucking war a day or two later in the Southside after that. I mean, yeah, everybody knew it was Southside. Uh, they did it, they knew who they, you know, had jumped, that the guy was from Southside, that Trayvon allegedly uh, pointed out. Uh, you know, in the thing behind the chain incident. So everybody knew it was Southside. Only you conspirators and you motherfuckers on the YouTube want to try to rewrite history. And niggas that ain't from Compton or LA area that want to make it be like, it wasn't Southside Compton Crips. Everybody knows it was South, Compton Southside Crips. But, yeah, you know, Shook says that stuff in, 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 in the doc. I can't say whether or not he didn't look at the guy. KPD said it uh, as well, the way Shook said it. So yeah, but he's electing for some reason not to uh, ever retaliate it on KPD and now, and not to uh, do the other thing, do justice uh, for his little brother. Uh, the jumping in the part, the back part, yeah, Shook has always said that's why he got grazed in the head because he was trying to hold Pac down because Pac was trying to jump in the back seat. You know, of course, him always making fun saying, yeah, Pac was trying to leave me. Pac was trying to leave me, jump in the back, you know, but that's just, I guess when you go through trauma, how you trying to, uh, uh, you know, to deal with the trauma, because you know, that has to be some form of trauma that he dealt with from, you know, getting shot at like that. Uh, but yeah, I have heard that. He have definitely said how he was trying to hold and push Pac down, but Pac was trying to jump in the back seat of the car for whatever reason. I guess if y'all go and listen to that, that crackhead, uh, uh, Diddy's involvement in Tupac's deposition is out there and the cops just need proof because he allegedly sent one million to the cousin of the guy who shot Pac, but the cousin never passed it along to the shooter. That's what saved Diddy from being in jail. The old man named, uh, that was trying to say, uh, Quincy Jones' daughter was in the back. If y'all go and listen to him, he was trying to jump in the back with her, which is the craziest shit I ever heard. But, uh, but that happened. I mean, well, who to say? You know, he, if he's sticking by the code or not, you know, identifying, I don't believe he saw, saw who it is or was or, or recognized at that point who it was, meaning no one for sure this was Keepy D uh, who had, uh, you know, that, that had did this. I just think he, like everybody thought of some male black guys, that after all of that happened, yeah, you consider him bitch. Just like uh, 
Gaddafi statement. What, y'all, what, what was his statement? They look like a bitch in the face, you know? Of course, anybody that shoot and you let somebody come walk in and shoot and, and start slapping or beating up on me right now. I'm going, and, and I survived. I'm going to be like, that bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> you know, that's just what you say. That's just what, what you think of people that try to hurt you and do stuff with you, do stuff to you. And so that's what I believe, you know, why he made that statement about how he look or his appearance and all that. And, and Gaddafi as well, by his statements of saying how he looked in the face and, and all of that. But, hey. Listen to what he says again. Said it before. Listen to what he said in his word, own words in that documentary as well. How this guy look? I mean, what was going to happen to Compton? What he knew was going to go down the next day? He pretty much telling y'all then what he felt and what he knew what was going down. Why did they go? And that's why I get so mad with him now playing and trying to rewrite history and stuff like that. There was a lot of people that went over there and took penitentiary chances, did penitentiary things after Tupac's death. And to go and try to make light of it now, there was even four people that lost their lives behind that. I have a problem and I be looking at stuff and I was looking at it on the news recently. And I saw where a country went and uh, saved a whole bunch of hostages. They killed like 100, 200 some people to save three hostages. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know. You, you, you lose 200 lives. To say three to four or five different. Now, if they're my loved ones, hell yeah, it makes sense. I know. But what about the other 200 people? There's something for y'all to think about. I'm not saying I don't believe in retaliation, and because I do. And obviously, my Lord and Savior do too, because He will send His angels to get your ass. But the point is, all these people went and justified went in and jeopardized their life and their their freedom and now you make a, a mockery of it would you feel that way if those soldiers or those people that were got killed for, for trying to save those other people lives and then people start making fun of it you gotta think about stuff like that put yourself in those situations to understand what people are saying, free Keefe D, when you know there were meetings and things and talking about for revenge and retaliation, and you were a part of, allegedly. Um, okay, Reggie, I didn't know if you, well, I'm pretty sure you saw it, so I'll get your opinion. Um, on part two of Suge Knight's podcast, this last one, uh, he made a comment saying that Diddy had been an FBI informant for years. Uh, did he, in, with you and him talking and stuff back in the day, did he ever talk about that before, or is this the first you're hearing of this? I was sure I know that. <laughs> everybody, it's so funny how everybody know who FI, FBI informers is, and, and the only reason you know because you're an FBI informer and all that. Y'all think informers don't talk. <laughs> they don't tell stuff in advance of what's going on. And it's not like informers are generally not known like that. Now, I, I know that people that made those accusations about uh, Diddy being one of the ones and Jay-Z going back and giving up the information on them when they were talking about uh, uh, formalizing the uh, the Lucky Seven. Uh, uh, I, that's what I always heard it was, the distribution company, when they were trying to make a, a seventh uh, big major distribution company. And so uh, I know some people made that accusation, you know, but... That, you know, because they, you know, Puffy didn't get indicted. I think Marine got indicted at that time, and then they were messing with Suge at the t- that particular time. And then we all know what happened to Jay Prince. But if we look at all three of their different 
there are situations we understand why the fans wouldn't have to all three of them if we keeping it real. But I do remember, and Shug, I'm going to make you remember. Shug and I were in New York one time. It was just me and Shug. We was on our way actually to meet Sam Snead uh, in Pittsburgh, I think he was at. For some reason, he, Sam Snead wanted Shug to come to Pittsburgh to meet uh, uh, his, his father. And we were on our way to, to, to go to, to Pittsburgh. But we ended up not going, we ended up going to Rochester, New York, not Rochester, into where Joe Joe and, and KC from, somewhere in North Carolina. But we were on our way to, to meet Sam and we didn't go because Puffy called him at the last minute. And this was like before Pop, this was like 90, uh, sometime in 95 though. And we went to his, his office, we went to Bad Boy's office. And I remember we going there and in the meeting, uh, I was in the meeting for some reason. I don't know why I was sitting in there. But Puff was complaining about how did, uh, you know, man, these fans are on me like crazy. How did you get them off <laughs> off you, Shug? Sure, because I know they've been following you. And, man, what can we do? What can I do to get them off me? And Shug sure gave them some bullshit, you know. They probably wasn't on us at that time. I don't think they were. I don't think they got back on us until after the Tupac shooting which would have been in 96. But at one time, they were on Shook. And so Shook told him some shit about this or this, and gave him some book, but they talked about it. So Puff did believe in like 94, 95 that the feds were following him around. Now, we also heard stories, and I know y'all gonna tell me in the comment section that Gene Deal uh, went down to the federal government and, and he was aware of it and told something about, about Shook and them or something like that. Um, but my point would be, people don't know if he's an informant, and if he was an informant, who do he got some paperwork on? Who who has he put in jail? Who who's went to jail with anything concerning Puffy that we know of? So I'm not here defending Puffy. I think Puffy is the biggest slime ball. Ball, well, not the biggest, but a slime ball. But, um, I don't know where Shug gets that from. Shug has called Snoop of an informant. Snoop did testify, not testify, threw out the statement before, but I don't believe he was a federal informant. Puff, everybody, I guess, have, Shug has been called down to the federal government before. I have been down to the FBI office with Shug before, where they had brought him in and called him in. Now, it was generally because one thing y'all don't know is when the FBI uh, on on wiretaps and stuff like that and they hear threats against your life, <laughs> they can't say it on it. They got to notify you. And um, Shook has been notified at least two to three times by the FBI that uh, there's somebody that had a threat on his life, that they overheard a threat against his life being made on some phones. Uh... So that would be my take. My only thing would be when she's making statements like that is, how the fuck would you know? And then, if you believe that, if there's evidence of that, who went to jail behind that? I get called being a federal informant and all of that, and number one, I can't be an informant, I was an ex-cop. But, number two, who, other than me being a cop, ever went to jail behind something that I informed them. Y'all pull that paperwork up and y'all show that. Every time I went to court, I went to court helping niggas. And so, that would be my take. Is this everybody always been accused of being an informant? That's our go-to word. You're either an informant, a snitch, or you're a faggot. <laughs> One of the three, all right? It's unfortunate that that's just the world we live in now. That's the go-back. Or we fucked your wife, or we fucked your bitch. Got about those. That's our go-to. And uh, so, just when y'all hear stuff like that, y'all just remember that. Y'all put that into, uh, you know, put that into your thing, and uh, think about that before you start spitting out 
or believing what people are saying just because people throw that out to the universe. There's even videos of him kicking it with Sug. Night, we'd love to hear what y'all think about this. Don't forget to like and subscribe.